Okay, are we on? Yeah, we are on. So, today we'll be dealing with uh, false breakouts or fake out as they are known. So, a fake out is when price temporarily moves above or below a key resistance or support level. And uh, they are very problematic for breakout traders. So, my strategy also includes using breakout as confirmation. So, you find out that if you are caught in a false breakout, it, uh, it can be very devastating. You know. So, what happens in order for you to can spot if something will be, uh, if a move will be a false breakout or not? You start by using what we call multiple time frame analysis. Multiple time frame analysis simply means that you use uh, different time frames for analysis. You check uh, specific things on different time frames. So, as you can see, we have the one minute chart up until the monthly chart. So, you can select whichever chart you want based on your strategy. So, mine usually focuses from the 15 minute chart up until uh, the weekly chart. So, what you will do first, okay, or this is what I do. I start on the 4 hour chart because it's uh, the 4 hour and the 1 hour chart are sort of in the middle. Are sort of in the middle. So, by using them, I can sort of get the direction. I can sort of get the direction of where the market should go next. So, this here, I started by realizing that we have a resistance level at this point here. It was a previous resistance here. We had some resistance and uh, an M formation, as you can see. This is an M formation. We had it at first, then price went down. Price dropped, then came back onto that level. But then what did it do? It rejected. But then the rejection is only seen on the 4-hour time frame. If you go to the 15-minute chart, you can see hey, that this, because this type of candle usually signals a strong buy momentum. Buy momentum. This bullish candle before uh, the, the bearish reversal. As you can see, price broke out from this sort of consolidation because uh, even if we include the session the session strategy uh, you can see that this was the asian session so it was some sort of consolidation then we had a break to the high using this candle you see the momentum on that candle and the candle to follow so if i have if i have my resistance here if i have my resistance here and it breaks usually what most people will do what most people will do is go in on the buy after this close why let me tell you a reason why these people uh, like making uh, the false moves it's because okay let me go back it's because as you can see here right it's a breakout first thing is a breakout so we have people who have seen uh, this potential of a multi-session M formation, right? There are people who have seen this multi-M formation and then they are going to sell this currency pair. They are going to sell USDCHF. So when they sell, usually, because uh, most retail traders are taught that if you are going to sell based off resistance, you put your stop loss at the previous resistance area or the previous resistance point. Resistance point. So we had this initial confirmation. We had uh, before it rose, there was this candle stick formation here. We had a rejection, then it came back and started to drop. So usually, what you will do is place. Your, if you are selling at that area, you will place your 
stop loss right on or a few pips away from the resistance. So your stop loss will be on that green line or somewhere above it, somewhere around here. And for sorry about that. And for those who are breakout traders, they've already said they are pending order, they are buy stops. So you see at this level right here. At this level right here, this is where the money is. Why is there money? Because people who have sold have put their stop loss right there on this level here. It's where the stop losses are. And there are those who have prepared to add more buy positions because resistance has been broken. So others are going to go in manual. Others are going to go in manually after seeing this candle right here. They will go in manually with a buy and others have set pending orders because usually uh, most people will be told set a buy stop at this area here because if price breaks out, that means it will continue going up. It's logical. But then there was this information. It's not completed yet. It's a possible one. And it's uh, possible that it might continue going up. This was just to trigger the buy stops and blow accounts as it goes down. Or also to stop out the ones which knew that this pair was going to sell. So they hit your stop loss, then quickly pull away from the zone. They reverse. So we have different types of uh, resistance levels. We have the horizontal resistance, which is this line right there. And... The diagonal resistance, which can be seen or which can be plotted using a trend line. So with that being said, we have breakouts or false breakouts in both the resistances. So it's to make you believe with all that you have. You place all your money on this area being a buy or this breakout being a buy. Whereas it's not the case. So what you do in order to avoid being trapped by such moves, is that uh, if you use the 15-minute chart for entries, you wait on your resistance and see how price reacts. Because I know many people like uh, having sniper entries, especially on reversals. But then sometimes they can be a bit dangerous. They need experience. So what you do, remember multiple time frame analysis, we went to the H4 and see and saw that, okay, resistance has been tested. So this is a potential multi-session M formation. We have a potential multi-session M formation. But then we have this resistance. And if we also go on the daily time frame, we have this, uh, what can I call it, inverse. Head, uh, possible inverse head and shoulders formation. So right now, these time frames are busy contradicting each other. So if it's a contradiction like that, you wait and see how price reacts at certain areas, resistant, mainly resistance and support areas. So we have that inverse head and shoulders on the daily, and we also have uh, the M formation, on the four hour chart so what you do because there's some contradiction here what you can do is go to the one hour and wait for it to close the one hour close showed you that uh, this one was a false break because price closed lower price closed lower it broke then it was a temporary break then it went back into the normal zone so this will tell you that this is a false move. But then you won't easily spot it on the 15 minute, which is why when trading on the 15 minute chart, you have to wait. Wait and see how price reacts on the resistance. You don't just jump in because it has broken. You don't just say because it, 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 it's a break, 
then we jump in. Wait to see. Wait for confirmation. If you're using indicators, uh, I'm sure RSI at this point it's saying I'm over, I'm overbought. So you have to sell me. You know, such things can also help. But then, as I was saying, you wait and see how price reacts on this area. As you can see, the next candle or the candle to follow was a, a bearish one which tested because right now after we've broken that resistance it's now tended to support so price came back and tested but then failed to close lower than the support which might give people uh, the impression that this is a chance for a buy re-entry you add more buy positions whereas it's going to kill you so after that we experienced this bearish drop and engulfing candle so that's when you could start seeing action you can see now that oh this this is a fake out then when you go to the h1 or the one hour time frame you find a close below that resistance so that's how you can actually confirm so now we have that four hour multiple session m formation we go to the H1, it has closed below the resistance. The 15 minute has given you an engulfing bearish candle. So you see, you have about three reasons to sell. If you add on indicators and some other things. Uh, oh, US deaths, I think they are about, uh, due to the coronavirus, they are about, they, I think they hit 50,000, if I'm correct. I'm not sure about my facts, but then I think they were, uh, they passed the 50k mark. So see, this is also something negative. We are, we are adding what? The geopolitical factors in the mix. So you see, we are gaining more and more confirmation that this is a sell. Because remember, when we go back this, uh, we have USD against a safe haven currency. So it's something like that. More confirmation on saying, you see how all these factors... How all these strategies are starting to come together to give you a signal. Hence, lot size number three, lot size three, lot size three. We have more confirmation. It continues dropping. Three. We just put it in. We just put it in. We just put it. Why? We have more confirmation. So, you see, these are the things which uh, I gradually talk about. You know, the lessons. That's why I say all these things will come together at some point. They may be spread out. They may be uh, individually taught. But then you have to sort of bring them together for confirmation. So, yeah, that's how we can basically say you can spot a uh, uh, fake out before I start deviating from the topic. Multiple time frame analysis. You spot your resistance and support depending on whether it's a downtrend or uptrend. Multiple time frame uh, support or resistance wait see uh, the candle type yeah we can call it the candle type the candle formation what type of candle is uh, brought up on that area what type of candle forms on the support or resistance area then after you're seeing this this because this is nonsense this is nonsense from the market makers they know that we have trapped many people. As I've mentioned before, they are taking out stop losses at this area, this area here, taking out stop losses and also triggering uh, buy stop pending orders. So you see, this right here is nonsense. Wait for this nonsense to clear, get your uh, direction, more confirmation, then finish them off. You flush them, you bury them. Hold. So yeah, that was uh, uh, a lesson on uh, the breakout. I don't want to delay you any longer. That was the, yeah, I think we are done. I think we are done for now. For now. There's always something to be learned. That's what you should know. So for now, we are done.